to Tuesday night service. We are so glad that you are joining us. We know that it is probably raining where you're at and maybe you're driving home, but you are tuning in. Listen, uh, you don't have to necessarily watch the video, but you can listen to it as you're uh, making your commute home. But we want to start out in prayer tonight. Lord, we thank you. We praise you that your word is going to be brought forth. We thank you, Father, that you're giving us that, that revelation knowledge that we need. We think that you're open up the hearts and the spirits of those who are watching to receive your word. We thank you. We praise you for safety if they're traveling back home, Father. And we also want to thank you um, for giving us the instruction that we need to have that protection, that comfort, Father, through everything that life tries to throw at us. So we thank you. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, tonight we are going to be talking about what are you reaching for? And I want you guys to really think about what are you aiming for? What is your goal in life? We can have short-term goals and long-term goals, but over the next few days, I really want you guys to write down what it is that you want. What do you want physically? What do you want spiritually? What do you want financially? Map out the different areas of your life and say, Lord, I need some revelation and some wisdom on how I can obtain the things that I have written down. So in understanding what are we reaching for, I want you guys to get a picture with me. Think about a natural thing. We're going to go with a beverage, okay? So what is your favorite drink? Let me know in the comments. That way I can make sure we're participating and I am seeing everybody's um, comments on here. But Let's say your favorite drink is coffee, or maybe you're a soda fan, right? You have a certain um, soda that you drink, or you're a tea drinker, right? We're going to go along these lines. So what is your favorite drink, okay? And if I have your favorite sitting in a cup right beside you, filled with ice or if you're just coffee, you probably don't want ice in it unless you like cold coffee, but it's sitting right beside you. And on the other side, I have a glass of water. Naturally, you're going to be drawn to your favorite beverage, right? Why? Because it has that yummy flavor to it that your body now craves. So you're less likely to reach for the glass of water, even though the water is better for you. Um, and it's ultimately the choice that we should be making. However, we seem like we want to go to that favorite, right? Because it has something in it that has this taste that we can recall over and over again, right? Have you ever got that craving of, oh man, I really want this food or you'll watch a commercial and you weren't hungry at all and then all of a sudden you see this and you're like man i could really go for one of those right now right well we have an opportunity every single day to reach for the right things or to reach for the wrong things so it's a matter of the choices we make so what are we going to decide to do are we going to make the right choices or are we going to go down a path that we don't want to be? Yes, Ricky, water. You are making the right choice. See, we're talking about that today. So when we're looking and evaluating our life, thinking, I know this is better for me, but my flesh, my body wants something else. How do we get into the state to where we're now reaching for the right things? Well, first we have to renew our mind. The word tells us that we have to renew our mind daily. It is not something you do one time, you become a Christian and oh my gosh, you have a perfect mind. That would be amazing, but that is not how it works. It's a continual process, you guys, every single day. Why? Because the enemy never sleeps. So he's always going to try and come at your mind. He's always going to try and put something new in your way to get you what? to cause separation from you and 
God. He wants to steal that word, right? John 10, 10 tells us that the thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And if we know that's the three things that he is coming, right? That's how he's attacking. Now we know, okay, if he's coming to steal the word, that means I have to have some form of resistance to where he cannot get that word away from me. Well, if we only go to church once a week, once a month, once a year, guess what? The word can easily be stolen away from you. Think about when you were in school, right? Um, for those of you who have been graduated for a while now, you can recall principles, right, that you learned in those classes. But do you remember every single thing that those textbooks said? No, absolutely not, especially if you haven't used some of the things in a long time. There's a lot of times that, you know, I went through different math classes. I cannot tell you all of the formulas, all of the things that I used. Why? Because I don't use them on a regular basis. Now, could I refresh my, my mind and recall and remember? Absolutely. But again, it would take me putting forth an effort to try and actually remember these things. So that's why it's important that we spend time with God every single day. Now, it's not because God changes because the word says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And if that's the case, that means there has to be what? Something to do with us. That means we don't always remember. We have to what? Get back into the word. You may read a scripture a hundred, a thousand, a million times. And then one day when all of a sudden you're going through whatever situation the enemy tries to throw at you. Now that scripture all of a sudden becomes alive to you, has different meaning, a different perspective, because now you say, oh, that's what that verse is talking about. Now I know how to use that in real life situations. So again, we're going to work on reaching for the right things. So we're going to start in Philippians 4.13. Now this verse, all of you are probably familiar with. Don't ever take the word for granted. Don't ever say, oh, no, I've heard that scripture. I can quote it word for word. That's great. We want to have the word on the inside of us, but it's always good to open it back up, feast your eyes on the word and see it, not just hear it, right? We need to hear, but we also need to look and see. Okay, so Philippians 4.13, if you are there, type amen in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, something to let me know that you are following along. You can hear me. It is raining outside, so we want to make sure that the internet is doing good and we are not cutting out. Philippians 4.13 says, I can. Ooh, sometimes we need to say that over and over again. I can. Not, well, maybe, or I don't know. I can. So just say that, type that in the comments. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, I love this verse, you guys. I have used this my whole life and I still use it today. But reminding ourselves that we can, not because we have the physical ability, not because we have the intellect, right? Not because we got this degree, not because of, you know, all the life experience that we've been through, but I can do all things. And it tells us how through Christ, Christ is the anointed one in his anointing. We can do all things through him. Why? Because he's the one that strengthens us. We get that, that inner strength to where we can keep going when our mind is overwhelmed, when our heart feels broken, when we don't feel at peace in certain situations, right? We can continue to press on. We can continue to smile. We can continue to walk outside that day. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ strengthens us. You may have to quote this over and over and over and over again. And at first you may say and be like, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Ugh. Right? You may not be um, in that true belief of I can at that moment. 
but the more you say it, the more you'll begin to believe it. Why? Because how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what are we doing? We're putting the word of God in front of our eyes. We're putting it in our heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So now we're speaking that out. We're hearing it again, putting it back down in. It's a cycle, you guys. It's a constant every single day. If you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I can do this today, right? Why? Not by my strength, but by Christ, but by his inner strength. So meditating on that right there alone will basically change your day because now your mindset is on I can, not I might, not it's not possible, not failure becomes um, of no effect to you, right? Because you're not going to allow failure or defeat to stop you in your tracks and say, well, that was it. Because there's a quote, and man, I can't even remember who said it. I need to write it down and just keep a little sticky note. Um, but it says that the only way you will fail is if you give up. If we don't ever give up, guess what? We will eventually come out on top, right? We're not going to take that no, that rejection letter, that eviction notice. We're not going to let all of the things stop us. We're going to say, no, what do I do now? All right, what's my next step? What's my next step? Constant progress, you guys, but never letting failure become who you are, right? God made us victorious in him. He didn't create us to give up. He didn't create us to be a failure. But did you know he also didn't create us to carry the load? We are supposed to give that care over to him. The word tells us to cast our cares on him. Not to cover up those cares. Not to pretend like those cares don't exist. But to literally present them to him and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. And it's as if you're making a transaction, right? You are now making that exchange. You're saying, I'm giving you this care. And as we turn over that care, he gives us the very thing that we need. So if it's peace that you need, he'll give you that inner peace. If it's comfort, if it's financial things, if it's relationship, you know, all of the things that life will kind of throw at your way, we can get the answers we need based off of seeking wisdom, right? The word says, um, if you lack wisdom, ask. That is all you have to do. All we have to do is ask him for wisdom. And guess what? We get wisdom. It is a free gift that he gives to us. It's not something that he hides from us. It's not something that he's like, eh, I don't know. We'll see how they handle this situation. And then when it gets too carried away, then I'll help them. No, he has the plan right now for you. No matter what it is, he has the way paved out. It's a matter of us reaching for the right thing, reaching for his word, reaching for his guidance and being obedient in the process, right? Because a lot of times we can get the answer that we need, but if we're not willing to do what it takes to get there, then guess what? You're going to be stuck in the same spot. And you're always going to be wondering, well, why is this happening in the question game, right? And that's where the enemy will again come in, try and play with your mind to where you're saying, where he's saying, yeah, see, you went to church all those years and you're still in the same situation. And oh, look what happened here. And well, that must not work, right? The enemy's always looking for ways that he can cause that division, that separation between you and God, because he does not want you to be victorious. The enemy knows if we understand our power and our authority in the word of God, then he is no match for us. He will lose every single time. So he has to make sure that we don't believe what the word says, right? Again, he doesn't care if we go to church doesn't care if we, you know, say, oh, I'm a Christian. He cares if you actually believe it, right? There's a lot of people in the world who claim to be Christians, who go to church regularly, but they don't have a true revelation 
of what it means to have faith. They have a head knowledge, but they don't have it in their heart. And it's important that we get it deep down on the inside of us because that's where that root system begins. That's where we can have that firm foundation in Christ, right? Okay, so we're going to go to our next scripture. And this is 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Again, if you're there, type amen, thumbs up. Let me know that y'all are participating with me. Even though I can't see you, we can still act online here. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. And it says, ooh, no, let's start in 7. That's good too. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, praise the Lord. Are we walking by faith? I hope you are. If you're not, that's okay. We can get on the right track and begin to walk in faith. So how do we walk by faith? Because that sounds good, right? We can raise our hands and say amen. But how do we actually walk by faith? Well, think about it. Walking by faith is not relying on your five senses, right? When we're taught at a young age how we smell, we taste, all of the things, right, in our five senses. And so when we become born again, when we become a Christian, we now have to learn how not to rely on those five senses anymore. We have to rely on God's word, right? So just because our eyes see death, just because our eyes see um, a financial deficit, just because our eyes see gas prices raised, just because our um, our ears hear of wars, of shootings, of all these things, right? We cannot rely on those things to determine what we believe. Does that make sense? I hope this is making sense. We have to rely on what does God's word say? So if the sickness in your life, what does the word say about sickness, right? So we go back, we find out, well, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Okay. So now I'm not looking at, okay, I have this physical um, disability or this um, diagnosis that is bad or terminal. I am relying on God's word that says by his stripes, I'm healed. He took those stripes for me. So I should not have to have this going on in my life, right? But again, if we don't believe the word of God, then it's going to be really hard for us to be able to stand in faith, right? Um, I'm currently reading, um, it is a study guide by Kenneth um, Hagen, and it is amazing. Um, oh, do I have that? I'll show it to you. If I think I do have it in here. I do. Yay. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see that. So it's Bible faith study course. Um, one of the people in Morning Coffee with Jesus uh, told me she was reading it. So I bought it. And let me tell you, it's been amazing. Um, you can get this on Amazon. You can go to their website and all that stuff. But anyways, I love this because um, he's telling the story in one of these uh, chapters of the study guide about how he was sick and um, it looked, it was not good, basically, that he was going to die. And he was like, he grew up in church. And so he's like, I'm believing, I'm quoting scriptures and, you know, all these things that he thinks he's doing the right thing. And then he realized it came to a point to where he was like, I wasn't in faith. I was wishing, right? And sometimes we can think, well, I'm in faith. Yeah, I'm quoting those. I'm saying those confessions. But again, it's more than just a confession, you guys, because we can say a lot of things, right? How many times in a day do we say idle words and we're like, eh, you know, we just kind of get on autopilot and there's no power behind what we're actually saying. And so we have to take it back to, am I releasing that power and the anointing, right? But again, if we're not reaching for the right thing, then what are we putting on the inside of us? You guys, it again comes back to, do you have that intimate relationship with God? Or is it, well, I pray when I need something. Or, yeah, I talk to God occasionally. Or is it, no, every day I have fellowship with God. Every day I get into the word and I pray. Or is it an obligation to you? 
right? You can find out what you value by, well, a couple different things. What you spend your money on and what you spend most of your time doing. So we can really go back and evaluate our life and determine what we value most by those two things. What we spend most of our money on and what are we spending the most time doing? Right. And I know a lot of y'all are probably like, I work most of the time so I can make money to pay my bills. Hey, I hear you. But again, we have to make time for God. It shouldn't just be, well, when I have, you know, five minutes of my time, then I'll give that to God. No, it has to be an active thing that you're doing. Like it's intentional. It's not just, well, we'll put it off till the end of the day. Because majority of the time, especially if you have a family and you've worked all day, you can push things out so far to where you're just like, you lay on the bed and next thing you know, you're asleep, right? You had every intention of praying and spending time with God, but your body is so physically drained, it's taken everything out of you. So are we willing to set aside that time for God? I hope we are, right? Because this is so important that we do this. Now, how can we do this, right? So let's say you do have a very busy schedule. Y'all, if I could see my schedule, you'd be like, wow, I don't even know how you get all of it done. Most of the time, I don't get all of my to-do list done. It transfers to the next day. So I have learned how to what, manage the things that I can do that day. I used to have this two page, three page list of things. I need to do this. I need to do that. And overwhelmed of all the things because at the end of the day, I felt like I hadn't checked off anything on my list except the first thing. And I'm like, I've accomplished nothing. I failed the day, right? But when we say, okay, these are the things that are important. I'm going to get these done, check boxes off. Then the next day, right? Do what it was that you had scheduled for that day. But don't over exert yourself to the point to where you are so stressed and so frustrated that you life is not fun anymore, right? God wants you to enjoy life. The word tells us that he wants us to have life to um, in abundance to the full till it overflows. So if those things are not happening in our life, we need to step back and reevaluate and say, what do I need to do to have that life that I actually enjoy? Like I want to wake up and, you know, see this day through because of all the goodness that God has in store, right? When we wake up with that kind of mindset of saying, God is so good. I just know the favor of God is with me wherever I go. And so you walk into a store, there's favor. You walk into your job, there's favor, right? I mean, even like the small things, the, the big things, they're all important to God, literally. Because the other day I was going to work and um, I was like, man, I really want to stop and get a coffee. And I heard the spirit say, keep driving. And I was thinking, oh, man, I in my mind, I'm thinking he's like, you need to cut out your coffee. You're drinking too much coffee. Um, and so I was like, OK, I'm, I'll go to work. And so I kept driving and I get to work. Not even an hour goes by, you guys. And all of a sudden, I'm walking in the hall and um, one of my coworkers is like, hey, you like coffee? And I was like. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, they just brought some extra ones. Y'all, I got a free coffee. The Lord already knew that that was going to happen. And because I was obedient, I got that free coffee instead of having to go and spend time in line and use my own money, right? God cares about the little things. Trust me, he does. But we have to listen to what he's telling us. All right, let's continue on. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great, you guys. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go. Oh, so many good scriptures that I put on here. Oh, man. Hmm. Yeah, yeah let's do this one. Proverbs 5. Proverbs 3, 5. And if you're there again. Give me that thumbs up. It says, trust in the Lord with 
all your heart not half of it not a you know portion it says with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding okay guys i want to stop and kind of marinate here for a second because lean not on your own understanding that means don't take any um moment right to where life seems crazy um you don't know what to do and you're standing there and you're kind of leaning back on what you know right we analyze things we want to think it through yeah anybody come on i'm not the only one so he's saying first trust in the lord right and then he tells us hey don't rely on what you know to get you out of this situation because majority of the time what we know isn't going to help us get out of where we're in right so most of the time we ended up in a position and we got in that position in the first place because we don't even know how we got there we're just like Psh. who knows what happened here but yeah we are stuck have y'all ever got your car stuck in the mud? It's not fun. Let me just say that. If you've ever experienced this, you know, one, you didn't actually mean to do that, right? It was something that you were completely oblivious to. Maybe you got off just a little bit too much of the path and bam, now we're stuck in the situation. But if we let ourselves stay in that area what's going to happen your tires are going to spin and spin and spin and spin mud is flying everywhere it is a hot mess you guys and you're going to get frustrated because you feel like we're going to be here forever until what someone who had the answer the equipment needed to hook up your car and to pull you out right well, God has the equipment. He has everything we need to where he can hook on to our life and pull us out of that mess. That's the kind of God we serve. He loves us so much that he's like, I'm going to help you, even though you went off the, the path over here and you're in a situation that you shouldn't have been in, in the first place if you would have been paying attention. But I love you so much. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to get you back on track, right? that's how much god loves us it's amazing absolutely amazing okay so we're continuing on trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in ways all of them acknowledge him and he shall direct your path now i like this part because he reminds us in all of your ways acknowledge him so whatever is going on around you don't take that focus on what you can see, what you can hear at that moment. Redirect it and bring the acknowledgement back to him. Bring your focus back to God and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you. Not because I'm going through a trial, not because I'm stuck here in the mud, not because I went down the wrong path, but because you are good, because you love me, because you are here to help me in this situation right because he's going to lead us back to where we need to be so always redirect that focus back to god not in a way to where we're blaming god for the things that are going on but to where we're saying no god loves me no god said he became poor that i might become rich no he wants me healthy no God want you know, we redirect that focus back on the truth. Well, the word of God is truth. All right, a couple more scriptures that we are going to read. And I want you guys to go to Joshua 24, 15. Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, and if it seems evil to you, to serve the Lord. Choose for you, excuse me, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. So again, it comes back to us. 
Who do you want to serve? What do you want to reach for? Right? Are you going to drink the You're going to drink the water? Are you going to eat the healthy food? Are you going to eat the junk food? Are you going to make the good business decision or are you going to go down the path of where you don't want to be? Right? Choose um, for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me, this is where we need to get. As for me, I don't care what all you other people are doing, right? Sometimes this is where we need to get. Say, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what, you know, right? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You have to make that choice. Me and this house, we're going to make the right decisions. We're going to honor God with everything we do, with our money, with our words, with our actions, right? Everything we do, we're going to bring glory and honor back to God, okay? So again, are you willing to choose what's right in God's eyes? Or are you going to let your flesh dictate what you do today, what you do tomorrow? Because it feels good, it tastes good, right? The enemy will use temptation to come against us. Again, to what? Entice us, to draw us in, to desensitize us, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed. I, I hope you have seen some of the things going on in our world today that are slowly moving in the direction to where the younger generation um, are calling things that are unrighteous normal. And that should not be taking place, you guys. We have to teach and train our children. We have to teach and train, um, you know, our house, what the word of God says. This is what's right and this is what's wrong. Not based off of my opinion, but based off of what God has said is right and wrong, right? So going and saying, no, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to honor him. We're going to make the right, righteous choices. And again, it comes with um, us learning who God is, how much he loves us. When we really get that grasp of how good he is, and all the things and the gifts that he has given to us, we want to honor him. We want to serve him. We don't want to give in to temptation. We don't want to um, make our body to where it doesn't slong, right? We want to preserve this temple, right? Our body is a temple and it houses Jesus, you guys, he lives on the inside of us. That is such an honor that we have him 24-7. That he's like, I'm here whenever you need me, whenever you just want to talk, right? We don't always have to just go to him when we want something. We can go to him and say, hey, today was great, you know? You can have a normal conversation just like you with your best friend. That's the kind of relationship God wants to have with us to where we do have that communication, to where it is so easy to talk to him. But are we going to say, Lord, I choose you? No matter if I lose all of my friends that I have, I love you. I choose you. Because I can guarantee you, if you put God first place, the right people that need to be in your life will end up in your life. Sometimes we have a pruning process and it may not seem fun at the moment, but I am telling you, when you allow God to bring the right people, bring the right connections in your path, it will change everything that you do. So I hope this has helped you guys in learning how to reach for the right things. Reach for God's word instead of reaching for the things that the enemy is trying to wave in front of you. Don't give in to the lies and the deception that the enemy is trying to draw you away. Draw closer to God in those moments when you feel like just frustrated and drained. And God will always strengthen you and he will preserve you and he will help you through 
it all. I love you guys and we will see you on Sunday.